Hey everyone, this is Ebony Harris with faith2faithbooks.com and thank you for joining us for another Faith to Faith Books exclusive. We're diving into an inspiring conversation with one of our newest authors, Nicholas Paxton. You do not want to miss this one. So let me bring you in on the conversation. Grab a seat, lean in, and listen as the interview unfolds. Let's get started. What made you choose accounting? I think it's something that either you, you see it and it's like, okay, I can, or you look at it and you're like, oh, you want to run away. But for me, it was having a conversation with my uncle. I said, I want to go to school for marketing. And he uh, was like, have you looked at accounting? Because, you know, the salary may be a little bit different. And I know how you like to live your life. I know how you like to spend money sometimes. I was like, I guess I'll try it out because my high school had a class on it and I took it and I love it. I mean, the, I think it, accounting is the best major for anybody who wants to go into business because it allows you to see the numbers. And when you're starting a business, when you're doing anything business-wise, you need to know the numbers. You need to know the finance because if you're, if you have a business and you're constantly in the red or it's constantly costing you more than making you money, then it may be time for you to close shop. So it's accounting is the basic business language. So that helps me to be able to do all the different things like ministry and conferences and be able to see and make projections on how to make sure that things are sustainable and legal. Jesus yes. says. Amen. I know, <laughs> of course, with publishing, I help a lot of authors get their books published and a lot of times it, it goes missed that even being an author is a business. So accounting is something that people need, whether they know it or, or not. Now, speaking of business, tell us about your business. Is it Victory Enterprises? Yes, yeah, so the Victory Enterprise, it's starting, it started with a clothing line, right? With Victory Apparel. Beautiful Christian merch. I love it. It's a minimalist Christian brand, um, emphasizing the importance of victory, emphasizing victory. And then we moved forward. And I was cool with the clothing line, got good reviews, got good feedback. And I was like, man, that's God, that's where we're going to end that victory. But it wasn't a victory enterprise then. But then I want to say April or May, God began to impress on my heart to do what he had called me to do a while ago, which I believe it wasn't the season or the time yet. But he began to let me know there was a season and time to start a conference. Amen. Which in any part of ministry, it is business. Uh, if you look at a lot of ministries, you're, uh, a lot of times like we, they got deacons and trustees when we look at churches because they need people that are business minded who love the Lord. Yes, they do. But also Amen. see the business side of things on how to make sure that you're keeping the church afloat because you can't give away all your money or you can't do things or otherwise you're going to go under and go be in deficit. And so the second business adventure for this year, so the clothing line is the conference and now third business venture being an author. Amen. I guess my accounting degree is going to come in very handy as it already has. I just came up with a new shirt idea for you. Victory is more than a t-shirt. It's a lifestyle and you can use it. You're welcome. <laughs> what is it? I'll say this. When it came time to make the conference, when it came time for clothing and my first video, one of the videos I made it to announce the opening of the conference, I was, I literally just sitting there talking, doing the video as I do social media videos, set my phone up. I was like, victory is more than a clothing, victory is more than a conference, but victory is a movement. I was like, oh, where did that come from? Where in the world? Oh, really? So you like, said that already? Oh, oh, so, okay. All right. I'm catching up then. Okay. <laughs> so, do you make all of your own clothing? I already know the answer, but I'm asking anyway. How do you get your uh, clothes? 
I have an amazing supplier. Oh wow. Which would be my beautiful mother. But she has a clothing a matter of fact, a custom in general brand, custom t shirts, mugs, tumblers, you name it, she probably could do it. Ornaments. We've talked and Victor probably came the thing, but she makes them. All of the stuff is made in house. Um you know, we outsource for things that we need because uh, we don't have a warehouse where we can make the fabric and things ourselves. But when it comes to actually designing them and making them look as beautiful as they do, we do all that in house. You know, it's a scripture in the Bible where it talks about how uh, God called certain people by name to do things uh, as far as his temple. And I believe your mom is one of those people who are called to work with her hands, you know, who are blessed mm -hmm. to work with her hands. I just love to see the things that she makes. So that's a blessing. Now, we know you've accomplished a lot as far as your clothing and at the conferences well you just had one what was the one that just passed i think it was was it last week or the week before november 15th so friday okay that's right there we had our harvest festival and it was amazing when i tell you that the end of the night i was speechless i texted my team the next day i said i'm still speechless Oh, um, wow. It was a great time. The turnout was really well. And it can only make me begin to imagine what God is going to do next year for our official conference. It's these taking stepping stones because Triumph Day happened August 10th, the month of August, and we're just taking steps and moving forward uh, again because this is a movement. So we can't stay stagnant, you know, we can't see something yes. as a movement, not be moving. So we've been taking steps and progressing to next year. and. By the help of the Lord, it has been a great, number one, we're having fun, fellowshipping, having a good time. But number two, it has literally saved souls. It has literally been an encounter with God. Yes, That's I heard God. someone got the Holy Ghost. To God be all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh yes, my goodness. Know. That sounded like it was a good time. And then you had <laughs> Pastor Farmer came and preached. Yes, Apostle Dan Farmer oh, preached he did his good preaching um, that day. To God be all the glory. Uh, right. Yes. And then you had singers. So it, it was it was just a really good event. I know the next one is going to be just as good. Now, the, what I really liked about it is how you, you raise the money for scholarships. Even though you're in school, you're still helping other people to, to go and pursue their dreams. So that's a blessing as well. Number one, I would say, God has truly blessed me. That's why I put it in a way that I can't look at other people and be shut our nose to them, right? Jesus tells us there'll be people who will say, I heard the sick in your name. I did this in a book. I was hungry you ain't seen me when I, let me use the school context. When you saw me struggling with school, you didn't help me. Um, but, but, but we see so many times that we just turn a cold shoulder to people and be like, I mean, I see you struggling where I see, because I know as a college student, amen, what it's like looking for resources, looking for it. And the Victory Enterprise as a whole, one of my main goals is to not just be somebody who says something and doesn't back it up, right? With our goal being to empower young people to have victory in every aspect of life, education is a very important aspect of life that sometimes, regrettably, in the Apostolic Pentecostal Church, we look over and to see students wanting to go to college and going to college and doing great things and wanting to progress. Uh, the Victory Enterprise has no choice. I mean, the Victory Enterprise isn't like a denominational thing, but the Victory Enterprise has no choice but to be a blessing to um, really take steps towards that mission of empowering. I mean, this way we're able to empower people financially. But yes, scholarships are a base of what we plan on doing as it's geared towards young people. A lot of young people are in school, either even at private high schools, even at four-year colleges, two-year colleges, trade schools, community college, graduate yeah. students, PhD students. I want to make sure that they're able to achieve all that God has called them to do. And I just want to help along the way. You were talking about victory in all 
areas of your life. And I know right now you're talking primarily about school, but this upcoming Victory Conference in 2025, we will have the registration links available on his website, nicholaspaxton.com, to God be all the glory. So for this upcoming conference, so the conference is three days. And so with it being three days, we um, decided that each day we're going to focus on an aspect of a life, not just like one singular, but a, an area, right? Um, day one, we're doing, it has all, everything to do with health. It has everything to do with yourself, your being, right? Thursday, day one, Thursday. We talk about mental health. We're going to talk about physical health. Day one, we're oh, talking yeah. about financial literacy, financial health. Amen, because we shouldn't be in church. And, uh, just amen. Like, we'll get into that when we get there. But we're talking about those things. Day two, now we're talking about, about our walk with Christ. Um, because I, honestly, to be honest with you, the mission statement doesn't stop at all aspects of life. It continues with bridging the gap between generations and um, giving a platform to the next generation. And so on those early days on Thursday and Friday, We'll also be carrying forth our mission about giving platforms. Even at night times, we'll be giving platforms to some names you may not know, some names you may not have heard of, but are powerful people that God has been using, right? But even bridging the gap, Friday, we're taking care of that. So make sure that we're doing what we said we're gonna do. Amen. But Friday is going to be a day where we focus on our walk with Christ, because that's an aspect of life, the spiritual aspect of life that we sometimes neglect when trying to be holistic Christians. Sometimes we try too much to go one way to man, I'm focusing strictly on business or man, I'm focusing. And we plan on doing it with interactive workshops, panels, discussion. It's not your average church conference. It's not your convocation. It's not your revival conference. But it's a conference where bring your notebook, bring your pen. There are going to be notes and nuggets that you cannot afford to not have because I'm bringing in kingdom professionals, people who not only just talk the talk, but people who do what they say they do. Amen. I mean, then Saturday, it's gonna be all about our entrepreneurs and our creatives and being able to be victorious in that aspect of, as you may say, I'm not an entrepreneur, but being a creative, and every human, is a creative, whether you believe it or not, whether you're a musician, whether you're an artist, a designer, right? Um, when God created the heavens and the earth, he created with his words. That's where we have parts of us. We made his image and likeness, not that we look like God, but we were made in a way that we are able to create. He made Amen. us to create, to be creative. So, yeah. Yeah, I believe that 100%. And we were created by a creator, therefore we create. Now let's talk about your book. What's the name of your book? And just briefly tell us why this project means so much to you. Victory over trauma, a guy's journal. And when you usually look at it, like hold up, a journal is the first thing. But when it came to this project, um, I believe that God, wants this to be a journey that we walk out and so what inspired me to do this is victory over trauma isn't just a good idea <laughs> yeah victory over trauma isn't a quick scheme to make money it's not a quick man let me just go write a book victory over trauma is my life um and with much for god with um to being obedient and that's all of what 2024 has been about it was behooved me to begin the process of helping others who may have been through what I've been through, helping others to see that trauma doesn't have to be their story and that their pain, their struggle, their hurt doesn't have to be their life. Um, like Jesus asked the man, will you be made whole? And that's really my question when people want to decide whether they should purchase the book or not, when they want to decide whether they need it or not. It's do you want to have victory over trauma? Do you want to be victorious in this area of your life? And if the answer is yes, then I believe that Victory Over Trauma is the perfect book for you because it allows you to begin to unpack what you may have been hiding. 
Yeah, and a lot of times I, I know it's easy to hold on to what's hurt you, but it's important to let it go because we're really only forgiven when we forgive. So victory is something that we definitely have to have in life. Now, tell us about your your family. Let's talk about how this started. What was your family life like and how has that influenced this book? For me, growing up, I, for the first part of my life, grew up with only knowing my mama and my grandparents on my mother's side. But as time progressed, I began to know my father, but still yet there was a strain there and it was a relationship where you know, I really grew up mainly with my mother, a single parent, most of my life. But even though I, I grew up with a single mother, it didn't seem like it. Everything I need, I edit everything. Uh, I asked for, within reason, <laughs> I had it. But so, I don't know what family, though, it became the structure for who I am, the structure of what I do. I am not, I believe that I'm somebody who's very family oriented. That family means a lot to me. So they've been a great influence, great pushers and motivators. I could say right now in the middle it is a lot of what I do wouldn't be possible no more without God, but what my mama, right? Who helps me along every step of the way. Without my aunts and my grandfather and the grandmama, but people have been in my ear helping to push me to be the best Nicholas that I can be. Amen. Now I know when people grow up without having both parents in their homes, something's always going to be lacking because it was meant for you to have both the father and mother in, in the household. What was it like growing up with a single mom? I'd say that being a black youth, sadly, a good amount of times, it, that's the normal way things are. Yeah. So I w didn't, I honestly felt like I fit in more so. Because <laughs> we'd be like, yeah, my parents are not together. I'd be like, wow, mine's mine not either. But I'd say that and part of it, and my mother could only raise me so much, but my mom couldn't teach me how to be a man. Only a man can show a man how to be a man. Amen. And we can pull out scriptures. And we can go to the word to see how a man should be. But we also, a lot of times as guys, you know, we were a pride for times. And so I can't listen to a woman tell me about this, even if it is biblical. Um, and so it was not until, I mean, granted, I did grow up know my father and my father did teach me some things but then even moving in I lived with my uncle for a brief period while I was in high school for the end of my end of high school it really began to show me how a father is supposed to be a father he dropped little nuggets and jewels and pulled pull me to the side and showed me things that he did with his sons and like this is how a man takes care of this and so though growing up with a single mother I tell people all the time, it took a village to raise me, to get me here. Uh, and I truly am a believer of that proponent that it takes a village to raise a child. And I'm grateful for my village because no matter how many times, you know, I, I was wild and I was tripping, as I like to say, <laughs> they still will pour into me to make sure I was the best that I could be. Now for a person who's just learning about Nicholas Paxton, interested in this book maybe they're dealing with trauma what would you tell them about getting your book what could you tell them right now this very moment i'm trying to use some words i'm trying to think of some words that you would use i'll, I'll probably say it wrong low key what would you tell them <laughs> if somebody wants to buy this book i'd say that low key it's a really good choice. Yeah, well, I, um, I, I was trying to find a good one. I, I know you was trying to get it in there. You know, <laughs> I was trying to help you out to, uh, to word it and how to put it right in the sentence. <laughs> but I'd say that it's something that 
I wish I had. I wish I had somebody that was open enough to say, this is what I dealt with, this is what I went through. And if I overcame, so can you, if I was able to go through, I can be an example to show you how to go through. Well, Revelations, I believe. Forget the chapter and verse, pray from it. But it says that we not only overcome by the blood of the Lamb, but also by the word of our testimony. And I believe that my book, not only is it just a story, but it's a testimony of the goodness of God and how God is able to help you. And so I believe that it's a great resource for those who, again, may even feel, you know, how sometimes when you've been hurt enough, when you've gone through enough trauma, you're just numb, right? Like yeah. crazy things will happen in your life and you'll just shrug it off. And people be like, do you not know what just happened? You're just like, eh, I don't know. I don't care. And so it will help get you out of that stagnant place into a place where you can be vulnerable and feel again. Uh, because God created us for feelings. Jesus Christ of Nazareth had feelings. Amen. And so if Christ had feelings... That doesn't mean your feelings don't make you demonic. Your feelings don't make you less Christ-like. Now, how you react and move upon those feelings uh, will determine if you're Christ-like, will determine if you're truly a disciple of Christ. Bet. Um, like, like if you're... <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I knew that one under, in there, but... If you're under pressure and you begin to start wilding and tripping and talking crazy and fussing, that's showing that you're more like Peter right now. You know, we got to come to where Jesus was under pressure and still be submitted to the will of God and not be afraid and not sway no matter what somebody may hold against you. So it's all in the feelings. I believe that a lot of times that when we, we overlook our feelings in church because we'll shout, run and dance overall. And David did encourage himself from the Lord. That is very true. But even if we read the story of David, if we begin to open up the book of Psalms, we see the parallel and the complexity of David's life. I mean, even if we think of David's life, there was trauma somewhere. Imagine that, that there was a call for the next king to be made and it was going to be one of your brothers and you weren't even called into the room. Because not, even if I'm not the king, I just want to see my brother be anointed to be the next king. And so... I believe that this book allows us to get to know us, get to know what makes us the way we are, what um, who we are and how to develop who we are and who we're going to become. Amen. Now, when you're dealing with trauma, um, you can't help but uh, to open yourself up. So you're dealing with that vulnerability. Now, for people who are struggling with opening up, how could you encourage them, anyone, whether it's men or women, I guess reclusive <laughs> ones, how would you encourage them to be vulnerable through this healing process? I'd say that embrace the pain, right? I think a lot of times we run from pain, we run from hurt because it's not comfortable, but in uncomfortability and in stretching comes growth. Muscles can't grow unless they're stretched. Amen. Unless they're point, pushed to a point where they have to tear. And so that's where the vulnerability comes in. It allows you to stretch. It allows you to step outside of your comfort zone so that you can grow and become and work on things that you thought didn't need to be worked on, but it allows you to see those things and spotlight those areas. What is it? It's the song they used to sing, the old church, I'm not gonna sing it. I believe they say, shine your light from the lighthouse and shine um, on me, search something. I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, it's a whole, it's, I feel like it's a whole bunch of different songs, <laughs> but, but it, it allows you to, it allows God to spotlight those holes in your heart. Um, yeah. Because what is it? Proverbs tell us that out of our heart comes the issues of life. And so that's why it tells us to guard our heart with all diligence. 
but in opening up and being transparent uh, and talking to the right people. I mean, that's that guarding part. But it will allow us to work on, do the hard work, be able to grow and develop. And once we're healed, some of those issues won't be an issue no more. Amen. Um, yeah, so this is all a part of a journey, and this is ongoing. You know, the Bible says that we grow from faith to faith. We, we're just, it's one level to the to the next level. You started a ministry in in high school, and now uh, you're in college, and, and you're still in ministry. But how has your walk with God helped you? to overcome trauma. I know people say, you know, I can do it without God. Let's talk about healing without God, right? A lot of times when we heal without God, there's always a longing for something to attach Amen. to something. When you have those heart work issues, it's a longing to attach. And so without God, you're privy to potentially attaching to the wrong people, which when we start the cycle, Without God, you're privy to begin to heal with substances, Amen. which restarts the cycle because now you have another thing that you have to get victory over, right? Yes. And so, and then a lot of times, a lot of other methods cost you a lot of money. I'm gonna mm. be real with you. I, I'm a very practical person, but but when you tell me, Jesus, I ain't gotta pay to have a relationship with Jesus. As a matter of fact, it pays off to have a relationship with Jesus versus relationships with people that don't love you and just want to use you and make you become very expensive dates two hundred dollars a piece or you talk about different substances drinking smoking which is like 200 a day or hundreds of dollars yes. a day versus being able to go to the one who created you i'll say this as a nugget but when we have issues within ourselves when we have issues in how we're functioning Let's say if your car stopped working and breaking down, you are most likely not going to take it to a rinky dink uh, mechanic. You're not looking for a hold in the wall mechanic when, you're, when your car is breaking down. You want the best of the best. You want somebody who knows how the car was created. Yeah. And so when it comes to your healing journey, the only way that you can get healed properly. The only way that you can be made whole is to go to the one who created you because he knows how you're supposed to operate. He knows how you're supposed to function. He knows how you're supposed to think because before you were in your mother's womb, he knew he formed and he ordained you. He consecrated you unto himself before you were ever even thought of by your parents. He knows Amen. the hairs on your head, but I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying when you were saying like people would go out and spend hundreds of dollars. Uh, if you look at it, time is valuable. It's more valuable than your money. So they spend all of this time and all of this money on things. And then in the end, they have nothing to show for the time that they spend. One of the things I wrote it in my journal is how much are you willing to pay for what God desires to give you? Um, and a lot of times people don't want to spend 10 15 minutes with God in prayer but they spend three or four hours on a video game they spend hours watching movies they spend hours investing in in things that can't really produce anything but this book is it's a powerful book and it's something that if people read it it, it takes a little bit of time but it's an investment in your emotional and your spiritual well-being i say as an accounting student, what we've been learning about recently is called opportunity cost. It's basically saying, and what I'll teach you as an example a lot of times is by us deciding to go to that class, the opportunity cost and what we're deciding is less valuable is going to work a job for however many hours that is. And so when we look at opportunity cost of growing in God, look at opportunity cost, versus investing in ourselves. I believe that it is a lot more, it's a great worth to invest into yourself and invest into your future. I promise you, your future self will thank you when you're yes. here because it'll realize, you'll look back at relationships and people and be like, was I crazy? <laughs> and the answer may be yes. The answer literally maybe, or was I, better question was, was I hurt? 
when I dated them? Was I desperate? And the answer truly can be yes. And that's not saying any shunning on any past people that we may have, may not have talked to or anything. But it's saying that hurt people hurt people. Hurt people choose hurt people. Amen. Um, I was talking to a therapist, but that's trauma bonding. We a lot of times bond off our trauma. Yeah. And so it leaves you open to get in relationships for, which will put you back in the same cycle. So your future self will probably be like, I'm so grateful <laughs> when you make the steps and the journeys to healing. Thank you so much for joining us for this inspiring interview with our, again, our newest author, Nicholas Paxton as we talked about his book, Victory Over Trauma, A Guided Journal. This is a powerful message that was shared with us today. And for those of you who want to get a copy of Victory Over Trauma, you can go to Nicholas's website. That's www.nicholaspaxton.com. Again, that's www.nic. H O L A S P A X T O N dot com. Now, if you're looking to become a faith to faith author, you can reach us at faith to faith books dot com. That's faith, the number two, faith books dot com. We have plenty of great reads, so you can check them out. Remember, our authors write like our readers' lives depend on it because it does. Until next time, be blessed.